Right now we have a power cut, but the power's still on because we have the batteries powering the house. We have an EPS installed, finally. I've got the man maths available to me to justify getting this upgrade to the system, which until now I've never really needed, if I'm honest, because I've had this for, well, a battery system for four or five years now, and we've never really had enough power cuts to justify the EPS functionality. Now though, in the last six, 12 months, we're getting more power cuts and for longer. So it's got to the point where basically I can persuade her that it's a good idea. And uh, again, the man maths is, is, is sufficient to get the upgrade to the system. So now let me show you the box itself and ultimately the various options that you can get because there's a bit of a, a misunderstanding I think out there that if you have a home battery system, you automatically have a battery backup and you don't. This is something that has to be specifically installed. Some battery systems come with it by default, some it's optional, some don't have the option. But it's not like a laptop, and I can completely understand where this kind of, uh, this, this misinterpretation of what a home battery does comes from. Because if you unplug a laptop, it just keeps going on the battery, doesn't it? And then you plug it back in again, it's interchangeable. A home battery system needs one other thing to enable that type of EPS or emergency power supply functionality. And there are several options within that. It's not just on or off. You've got a few choices. Now, before I show you the system, full disclosure, I work for Give Energy. I have done for about a year now, even though I've had a home battery system for about four or five years. So this is an upgrade to an existing system long before I worked for them, but full transparency, I do work for Give. But this is a video about any battery system, or at least nearly all battery systems out there, because this is something you can get for them. It's not, it's not specific to this, this is just what's installed in my house and has been for years again before I started at Give. Now, let's have a look at the system itself. Because it's, let's face it, it's pretty basic, but there are, again, several options. So this is the box itself. There's nothing really to show you. It's just essentially a bunch of relays. And the idea of one of these, whichever brand, make or manufacturer you have, is to cut power to the grid in the event that the power goes off from the grid. If this wasn't in place and my batteries were outputting whatever to the house, they could send some of that back down the grid where people are working on it trying to fix whatever the problem is and essentially end up electrocuting them. So this essentially cuts the grid connection so the batteries can power the house with no risk of sending the power back down the grid and then again hurting the people that are working on it. So that's, that's all these things are. Again, pretty simplistic stuff. It's just a bunch of relays and a meter and well, that's it really. I don't have to do anything because as I said, there's several options when it comes to EPSs. Uh, you have what I have here, an automatic changeover switch. So you have, you've probably heard of gateways. Tesla do one, Give do one. I'm not sure if anybody else does, but essentially that's what this is. But the gateways are typically a lot quicker. So in the event of a power cut with a proper gateways, we'll call it, you won't even probably even notice that the power's gone off, that the, the lights won't even flicker. Whereas this automatic changeover switch, which is a more of an EPS style thing, for me, uh, I think it's about a third of a second, maybe half a second, the power will go off, and then it will come on again. Pretty much just like that. So I will, I will know there's a power cut, because again, everything will go off for half a second and come back, and then it will do the same when the, uh, the, the grid turns back on again. So this is, a, think of it as option one, automatic changeover switch. In the event of a power cut, I don't have to do anything, it does it for me. A gateway will essentially do that, but a lot quicker. Option two is very similar to this, only it's a manual changeover switch. So if the power went off, you would have to manually flick a switch or you know, clunk to enable power to the house. So you would tell it that you want that uh, EPS functionality rather than it just being automatic. Uh, a third option, which uh, is related to this. You, you would get another consume unit, essentially, but you could, if you wanted to, and this is probably the more common one, I would say, in terms of the non-gateway EPSs, you could say, okay, well, I want my first floor sockets and lights to be on the EPS. So in another consume unit, you would get all this sorted out. I would get my, my plug sockets in the house and lights, because they don't take a lot of power, and maybe the heat pump, 
possibly the heating system. So in the event of a power cut, they can get uh, power from the batteries, but nothing else in the house can. The final option is, well, one of these, a plug socket. Now this is nothing to do with my EPS, I've got a whole home backup, but I could make it so that just this plug socket or a, a, an individual plug socket or pair of sockets that are just for the EPS, that, that will give me my backup power. So I could plug into that in the event of a power cut and then run an extension cable to wherever I want to give me power to the fridge or freezer or the, the, the internet router or whatever you want. You don't have to have the whole house, you don't have to have a couple of the, the ring mains, if you will, or you could have the whole house. So as I said, there's lots of options. Now, if you're thinking about getting a home battery system with or without solar, Heatable, that's who Harry used for his house. He's got solar as a customer through them and he's more than happy. They do battery only installations at 0% finance. If you are, as the majority of people do, get it to save money, then that makes it a little bit more palatable, doesn't it? Because you can save money without having to borrow or at least pay for borrowing. They do multiple brands, they do multiple options, and of course you can get solar from them, not just home battery systems. We are happy to recommend Heatable, and they are sponsoring the channel, they're keeping the channel running. Because without sponsorships, as I'm sure you're sick of hearing about on YouTube, on every channel, without them, it wouldn't be worth doing, if I'm brutally honest. So thanks to Heatable for sponsoring the channel and ultimately keeping these free videos to watch free. Now this means that as long as the batteries have capacity, and thanks to an incredible match when it comes to solar, um, well, we, we could have probably done almost the entire month of March with not touching the grid. We could have been grid, well, off grid, not just grid neutral, because the solar tops up the battery, the battery powers the house through the night, and then the sun comes out in the morning again. So in theory, this could go on for days and days, weeks, as long as there's enough sun to put power back into them then you just keep going. But there are some restrictions. As I said, if the battery is depleted, then the power goes off. If you go above the capacity of the inverter, then you will have a brownout, I guess you would call it. So I have a 3.6 kilowatt inverter. That's pretty ordinary. It's not a, a, you know, it's not a big power uh, amount, as it were. 3.6 kilowatts is a lot and would absolutely do us for the majority of stuff. But you can get now 8, 10, 12 kilowatt inverters and, 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 and power, well, the, the EV charger if you really wanted to, which would be absurd, but you could do, you could do that if you wanted to. Uh, but in a full electric household, which we are, we've gone for the whole home backup just because it was a nice easy option. I might upgrade that in the future, but again, for now, you would just be sensible to, if there was a power cut and you don't know how long it's going on for. You would ration it, wouldn't you? Just like anything else, you think, okay, We've got, in my case, probably about 17, 18 kilowatt hours worth of energy left in the batteries at the moment. This could go on for a few minutes, could be tomorrow, could be a few hours, could be anywhere in between. So you would think, right, well, let's be sensible about this. Let's not turn the oven on. Let's not turn the kettle on. Let's not turn the stuff that's just gonna sup the energy from the batteries very quickly. So 3.6 kilowatts, just to give an idea of what that would power. And this is probably the lowest you, you would realistically have in a house. The most our heat pump could possibly take in the worst case scenario, which it has never ever done, is about 2.4 kilowatts. Realistically, if it's minus 10 in winter, it will use 1.4, 1.5. I think the most I've seen it is about 1.9. So that still gives us, well, we've got 3.6 and that's, let's say two kilowatts gone. We've got another 1.6 kilowatts the base load of this house with the you know the the, the smart speakers and the, the the bulbs and the tv and things like that is about 500 watts for well for 400 to 500 watts they have a couple of pc server stuff running as well as a geek you know geek things uh, but again you just turn them off wouldn't you you think well this this is going on for a few hours now i'm going to turn stuff off in the event of a power cut now because it is getting annoyingly frequent here and in winter with a full electric household i want my heat pump powering I want my plug sockets being powered. When we do have a power cut, it is usually just for, you know, 10, 15 minutes, but sometimes it can be for a few hours. So that's why I went for a whole home backup rather than a plug socket or just a, the plug sockets upstairs or something like that, rather than something individual, because I don't really want to exclude anything. I would like to think that, you know, all three of us are intelligent enough to turn stuff off once the app goes, yeah, you've got a power cut, you've got a power cut, be careful. So, as I said earlier, there are several types of EPS, 
it's not by default with any battery manufacturer. You have to say, I want this. The installer will then, you know, do what's needed to get it installed. Some battery systems, the gateways, for example, I've mentioned, come with it by default, by as standard. But again, the installation is different for a gateway battery system compared to a non-gateway battery system. Right, I think I'm done. I'm actually looking forward to power cuts now. In fact, if you have a gateway or EPS, if, if you have this system in any brand, make or manufacturer, if you have essentially a battery backup option in your house, at Christmas, do you turn on all the outside Christmas lights on if there's a power cut? Has anyone actually done that? So the entire street's off and then there's just your house lit up. For some reason, I can't wait till that happens. I don't know why, it's completely showing off, but it will also confuse people because they'll go, hmm, looks like the power's off. Well, they're on, so it can't be the street. <laughs> That's gonna happen, isn't it? It's been annoying a few times where I've had all this power stored up here and I couldn't use it until now. But again, the fact that the power grid, with no, uh, <coughs> from me, have been cutting the power to the house often enough, meant I've got it past the missus and now we, now we have the box. It's the simple things in life, isn't it? Wow, I have a sad life if I'm excited at that. A few relays. But I know I'm not the only one. There'll be people watching this that go, yep, I've got that. It's great, isn't it? Yeah, power cut's brilliant. <laughs> Once more, thank you ever so much for watching. Thanks to Heatable for sponsoring this video. And if you want to support the channel, just do the like and subscribe and the comment thing. That's how any channel you watch, you can help out. You don't have to pay 99p a month, although you can do to become a member to get the videos early. But if you like a channel, watch the whole video, click the likes and put, put a comment in essentially. That's what drives engagement. That's what helps channels. So there you go spiel over with advertising done. Thank you for watching and I'll see you soon.